On this episode of Decently Indecent, I sat on this couch here behind me and had a lovely conversation with my friend Caleb, who you may know as Oompaville Online. We chatted about what it's like running multiple businesses, including a YouTube channel with over 5 million subscribers and his rapidly growing candy brand called Sour Boys. We also spoke about our health, anxiety, supplements, and a little bit of philosophy tossed in the mix. I really appreciated and enjoyed our time together, and I hope you guys find it valuable as well. Thanks so much for tuning in. Oompaville, Caleb, my dear friend, thank you so much for joining me. <clears throat> Try number two, we had some internet issues. We yucked it up a little bit. We decided to give it another go, but we're back. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, man, no problem. I know I've, I've, I've heard the rumor mill is you just love doing podcasts. So I, I love podcasts. <laughs> yeah. I love weekly every week. It's your favorite thing to do. Just giving up hours of your time, but Hey, listen, <laughs> this is my new show and decently indecent here. And you don't have to, I'm the one that has to lead it, right? The, the, the burden is on me right. to come up with the great questions. Now, before we started the few minutes ago, when we were first yucking it up, you were just getting off a business call and that business call was about Sour Boys. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, just since you're doing me the favor to be on this show, which I deeply appreciate, can I return the favor by killing Ryan Trahan for you? <laughs> I, yeah, that would be awesome. Honestly, I, I know a couple guys from that area. You and if I have in to do it, pull a string or two. <laughs> yeah. You get some ops now, out in Austin for me? Yeah. Now I say that because I watched uh, I watched his his launch video for the for the for his candy brand, mm -hmm. and for those of you listening or watching that don't know, uh, Caleb owns a brand called Sour Boys that makes delicious candy, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I was curious because you you I saw your video as well where you were like you, you know fuck this is my wheelhouse so I'm gonna get his candy yeah. I'm gonna try it, I really enjoyed it I thought it was good you were fair in it you were objective cool. which I love. Um, so what, what do you think? Like when you first saw that video, we were like, oh, great, more competition. Or do you think healthy competition is good? Makes you work harder. What are you thinking? When, I mean, when I'm going to be, I might, out? I might be a sociopath. I do genuinely, <laughs> my first reaction was not any sort of, comp I did not think it's not competition. I was like, uh oh. And then I saw it and I was like, okay, it's not competition. We're good. <laughs> Yeah, we're good. I love that. Yeah. And expand on that for me. And I think you talked about this in your video, but here's the thing I want to say, and I'm curious to what your thoughts are about it. He's doing the influencer thing where it's like, hey, I'm making candy, but it's healthy candy. Yeah. Right? Hey, oh, it's like doesn't have as much sugar better as regular candies. You. Like, like, yeah, it's better for you. Yeah. It's like the Pokemane, hey, I'm making cookies, but there's vitamin D in it. <laughs> there's a cunt hair of vitamin D in my yeah, cookie. Like, trace amounts of vitamin D. It's such a marketing it's just such a yeah, marketing so cuck fest. I can't stand it. I do I do like that I do like it when creators make brands and they actually stand behind them. And I feel like Ryan Trahan's Absolutely. is probably one of the better ones that I've seen, Absolutely. to be honest. Yeah. Especially from yeah. like the ground up the way that they've they've launched it. But yeah. it was a company already before Ryan came along. Um, which means it's not competition. It isn't his it's not personal to him. It's it's a it's a brand that he gets to work with, that he enjoys working with, as opposed to working with other brands. For me, it is like what I'm going, it's what I do most of the time. So it's like a different, I just, I just, it's, it's just not like, it's not like, like I, I can add a, at will just add other products and like do whatever I want all the time at any given right. point. Um, Cause you have your own manufacturing plant now. Yeah. Like you, you run the show. It is your business. You built that thing yeah. from fucking bones and, and, and tendons basically. Yeah. I mean, if, if Ryan Trahan's competition, <laughs> then what the fuck's Mr. Beast? You know what I mean? Like I'm not allowed to, there's no, I, it's just such a different thing. We have such different audiences. I'm just happy to see, see him taking a, a risk. And I hope that he saw Sour Boys and was like, yeah, that's something that I want to do. Yeah. I love that. And I, for the record too, I think Ryan Trahan is an, an incredible kid. I've met him a few mm -hmm. times. We've spoken many yeah. times, really nice guy and is great at what he does. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I think I share that same view where, and you can think about this too, whether it's, whether you're in the same niche as somebody and trying to upload content that gets views and traction, or you're creating a brand or a product that you're trying to, to market. Um, there's enough, there's enough people in the world for everybody yeah. to prosper. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like everyone can prosper. And of course there's an element of competition in certain things. And that can be good because it can drive you whatever, whatever it is that drives you. But yeah, I just, I thought it was funny. I saw that and when it was like, boom, like the sour strips 
And I was like, oh, that's so funny because I've talked to you so much about yeah. about your company and stuff. And I've just been so impressed with what you've done um, with Sour Boys. I thought that was cool. But I thought your video, your take on it was was very good. It was like, this is cool. It's good. But it's also like, I, I'm just like, if you're going to make fucking candy, bro, just make candy. Don't make healthy candy. That that's, That is the <laughs> only thing that really bothers me. It's like, it's yeah. always just better. It's, they just try to make it. It's fucking candy. It's candy. It's literally straight sugar. Like that, yeah, that's what it's, I want. <laughs> it's, yeah, I, I don't and understand. It's I, mean, I, I do understand why people buy it, but it's just a, it's just like a, I don't know, commodification of like trying to better yourself, which is not really. Well, it, it's it's the marketing. You know, I, I look at it as the the marketing cycles of anything dietary over the last. 20 or 30 years it started with low fat stuff in the 90s when yeah. i was a kid you know i'm a little bit older and that was like fat was the devil and everything was just now low fat they're creating things with like uh, fake chemicals in them to replace fat and then it turned into sugar is the devil and diabetes and we obviously have a little a, a bit of a a health crisis in this country for sure but <laughs> let me tell you right now if you're struggling with your health Eating candy that has a little bit less sugar in it is not going to be the solution to your problems, I promise you. <laughs> if you're going to eat no. candy, just eat the candy. There's 99 other things you can do in your daily life that that can benefit your health. So The existence of, j just just so you know, just so you're aware, Yeah. also, you can buy just sugar and eat it as well. So it's like, you can, you can buy pure sugar if you want. And like, if you have these things and they exist, they're not magically going to negatively affect you. Like it isn't, it's not poison. It's like, it's, it's literally just energy. It's like what is in your blood that your liver makes to, yeah. so your brain works. So it's like a, yeah, I don't know. I, I think the whole better for you thing is just such a fucking weird cop out, just nonsensical, uh, illusion. Agree. But I feel like it, that's, it kind of, it makes sense that that's the route they took because that seems yeah. very trendy right now it for is, as yeah, far as. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, they should add more vitamin D. Yeah, that's what I mean, dude. But I I never really spoke about that or made a video when Pokemane launched that cookie, and she got so much flack for being like that broke boy comment where she, yeah. that she made on stream about her cookies being expensive. I could care less about that. I was just so entertained by this whole like, hey, here's my cookies, and they have vitamin D. <laughs> <laughs> dude, yeah. So you get you get it's a you don't need to go out in the sun anymore. You're a game no, running state. Just eat no. the cookies. Yeah, and it's not filled with you know just garbage fillers and sugar, but it has vitamin D, so it doesn't matter. So it's fine. You can eat as many as you want, and it'll make you healthy. Yeah, dude. At the end of the day, I really don't care. I'm just grateful that we can do you know what we're able to do. I'm, I'm excited. I like making candy, and I like it. It just sells. It sells out quickly. We get great emails. Even the people who hate it or have negative experiences, we always make them happy at the end. I that's mean, that's fun. the true testament to someone who cares about their business. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I really do. I I, yeah, like. Dude, another thing that Ryan Trahan doesn't have is a company card. <laughs> he, can't, he can't, there's no expenses, right? There's no, he can't, yeah. he can't deduct expenses that reflect on his personal tax return. So is he white labeling the whole thing then? No, no, I think he's like, uh, I mean, maybe, I don't really know. The company did yeah. exist before. Joyride did exist before. Um, okay. I, 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 my instinct is that he, de he definitely white labels. It's like for sure a white label thing. He just came aboard. Um, right. But at the same time, it is in Austin. So it's probably like someone he knew maybe had a relationship with and they they worked on it for a while. Um, so it's it's probably like the next best thing to white labeling. And there's nothing wrong with white labeling. That's normal anyways. Everything I agree. That see, I would say the majority of influencers yeah. that come out with products, that's what they do. They have obviously manufacturing plants that make yeah. the thing that they want. They talk with them, brand it, and then yeah. create their own product that this company's making. Or yeah, it's, Same thing it's, with Pokemane. Exactly. Yeah, I think that, uh, <laughs> that uh, I, I'd like to think that Ryan is like involved directly in the in the creation process of the of the product. That's what I would like to believe. One step I would beyond think white labeling. Yeah, I, I would think, think so. he is. Obviously, that that comment in that question is not to belittle Ryan again. I think he's going to do fine. I think he's going to do great with that. Um, but I am. I just you know, it's I've in the talks I've had with you over the years. I've seen all the processes you've gone through in building this company. Uh, I should excuse me. I haven't seen all of it from the surface. I've talked to you off and on, and obviously a lot of it's become public since then. With that, the scam you went through and all these things. Uh, and you've just blood, sweat, and tears for years. And yeah. it got delayed because of the whole problem with the scam. And now you're finally operational and you're selling candy. How 
that must feel like a proud thing to you. Like out of all the businesses you do, your YouTube, would you say the candy business is your kind of your pride and joy right now? Oh yeah. I mean, it's yeah, absolutely. It's a hundred percent. Cause I have like, I am the, I am the acting CEO of that company and yeah. I am not cut out at all to be a CEO. Cause you have to be really mean, <laughs> you have to be really mean to people and like really, <laughs> there's a lot not. of determinate factors. And I also yeah. f- hired my mom to run distribution because she has a lot of experience there. Love and that. I hired a childhood best friend to handle basically oversee the manufacturing because he, he has, he has a lot of experience in, in like, um, uh, chemicals and shit and, and working with SOPs. He worked in a, uh, he helped like with milk process, like food related manufacturing. Like that's, yes. it's a very specific thing. So having those two people who are happen to be like really close, I'm really close to them and actually having to have like, uh, there's, you know, businesses don't just magically run. You have to have, you have to point out weak places points and, places. and yeah. you have to figure stuff out very yeah. consistently all the time in order yeah. to make it work. It's literally <laughs> just running a YouTube channel, but way harder, <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> way more but, difficult. But at a different scale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Way like YouTube stuff is so, I'm so grateful every day that I get to make YouTube videos seriously, because it's like, it's, it's, I mean, everything, the whole thing, I'm incredibly grateful, but yeah, it is you, the the candy is definitely my uh, my 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 bread and butter at this point. It's my if I could quit YouTube right now, if I wasn't integral to the process being a YouTuber, uh, yeah. then I would do that for sure. I would just do that all day. Yeah, it's it's, it's interesting. Fun. It's tough. I imagine when you have so many irons in the fire like you do. Obviously, you've been doing YouTube for a long time. You've transitioned through different styles of content. I mean, the the amount of content you put out right now is staggering. I mean, we're talking about. 30 to 45 to hour long documentary style videos, like three times a week more mm-hmm. <laughs> on one channel. And then you have a second yeah. channel. So I've always been impressed in the time that I've known you with your ability to surround yourself with good people that can, uh, like you said, kind of fill in the gaps with the things you're not good at or the things you no, no longer have time to do. You know, in my experience, it can be difficult, A, to let go of certain things, B, to find good people to replace you that can do those things and at scale too. It's not just like one or two people. I mean, you're working not only at Sour Boys. I know you have a a team of people that helps you with uh, all your YouTube stuff and that skill is no joke. So I just want to commend you on that. That's just, I've always been very impressed watching you from afar operate at the level that you do. I think there's a lot that goes underappreciated. Most of the people that watch you on YouTube, they're like, oh, it's a YouTuber and he talks about fucking YouTube drama and little shit. It's like, they don't see what goes on behind those closed doors, babies. And you're fucking busting your dick day in and day out. And on that note, what is, what is that like? Are you, are you just, are you just like a walking stress ball at all times? Like oh, how, is, <laughs> how yeah, is that? Really? For yeah. sure. Yeah. I, yeah. um, I, I have a, uh, I have a lot of, st- I deal with a lot of stress. I will say I, yeah. I, um, when I was 19 years old or something like that, I had a terrible experience while driving and it okay. caused a, um, like a, a, a panic disorder to develop in my brain. From an so, acute experience. From a very, it's, it's like legitimately like PTSD, like an actual acute experience. Um, that wow. I, that I have a, uh, a gene in my body that makes my, you know, catecholamines are like yes. neurotransmitter. Yeah. So like it's epinephrine it's, it, and all those things. Exactly. Yeah. Just like yeah. super ultra adrenaline all the time. And I've had a lot of panic attacks throughout my life and I didn't know mm-hmm. what they were ever. I thought I was just like dying, <laughs> you know, classic. <laughs> just thought I was dying. And then one time though, I was sure. driving and it happened. And then I associate it with behavior, with an actual activity and behavior for the first time ever. Um, and then that caused like a lot of bad stuff for a long time. And I was just like a massive, just stress, like literally on the verge of like a nervous breakdown for like yeah. six years, basically. Wow. Um, and then, uh, I started the candy stuff and this was like still when I was a YouTuber. Sure. I mean, you can see some pictures of me from like, I don't know, fucking 2000, 2020 and 2021. I would, I weighed like 131 pounds. And I was like, just so just emaciated and skinny and, and, um, just didn't take care of myself and was just always stressed about everything. And now mm-hmm. I'm the same, but instead of being stressed about like living and being alive, I just worry about my employees, which is way it's amazing. Healthier. You're repurposing yeah, the stress. Exactly. So it's I totally love like, that. I'll have something happen or something will go down and they're like, fuck, what do we do? And I'm just like, 
I just am so calm without even, you know, you do, if you would ask that, me five years ago how good. I would deal with that situation, I'd be like, I would just shit and then fucking die. Two movements, bowel movement, physical movement, shit and run. And then I, would, I wouldn't be able to handle it. Um, but now it's like, it's just kind of normal, so... Yeah. So it's interesting because you've gone through that for so long, these high stress situations in a business environment that maybe some of your employees are freaking out over. You're like, oh, this is nothing, dude. You yeah, dude. <laughs> try, try, <laughs> I'm right try, home uh, right now. try, try rather wanting, try, try, uh, <laughs> thinking you'd rather drive off a bridge than go to work. Try that. Yeah. I'm sure most people have, have uh, you know, they, they've experienced that, but like persistently, or instead of walking into a grocery store around people that you would rather just like, you know, not eat or something like yes. that. Yeah. So this was, so this is social anxiety. It all was, it was social. It was everything. There was just a, like an anxiety disorder that, that plagued you still does to this day. And you've just, as you've grown on YouTube with the businesses, you're learning obviously as you go different ways to deal with it and to try and redistribute some of those anxieties. Almost like it feels like to me, like if you make yourself so busy that you, you know what I'm saying? Is that, you think there's a piece of that where it's like the busier you are, the less time you have to sit and be anxious with yourself. Is yeah, I, th I think so. And I think it's, it's, it's more so, um, I definitely think that, that it, there is an aspect to it, but I think that's how I dealt with it a lot at first was just distracting myself. Yeah. Um, and it's the, the technical term is called agoraphobia, I believe. Um, that's okay. just like, it's that's basically like the social anxiety piece, right? Where you don't want to leave the house or whatever. It's, it's, it's the fear of fear basically. So like you fear being afraid. And then as soon Got as you it. feel like if you're exercising and it's a, it's a similar sensation to what you would feel during a panic attack, it invokes a panic attack. If you mm -hmm. do anything it's like self, that, self fulfilling almost exactly, yeah, you you feel yeah. like any sort of normal human reaction to anything, which is adrenaline, if it's an excitatory yep. thing, and then mm -hmm. you're just like double, quadruple, you know, sextuple, you're hyperventilating within seconds. Uh, so it's it, it's it's that, and and um, I would say the way that I deal with it mostly now is by just uh, I read a lot of books. And uh, the most the most beneficial books that I've ever read are the most beneficial book I've ever read is uh, I I don't I don't really want to well I maybe I'll say it because pe people it. might think I'm like a they might apply certain stereotypes to me if I mind comp no 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 <laughs> no actually just don't go that way <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of another fucked up book but I can't <laughs> that's like the most fucked up one <laughs> something by Joseph Wibbles or Wobbles or yeah um, no sorry what's the book go ahead uh, it's it's uh it's uh Soren Kierkegaard I believe I have it right here it's called Ooh. the concept of anxiety and okay. um I read it a lot and I read it a lot many times and it's it's pretty much just like Having, I think uh, this is pretty. This is pretty deep and philosophical. But I did not grow I up love with it. faith. I did not grow sure. up believing in God, and my parents didn't like put like any sort of faith in me. And I think that's what caused. That's what has caused this uh, this problem for me. It's because I have no faith. Not just faith in a God or anything, but just no f that just feeling. Just in general, that feeling of like, oh, I believe I can do this. Like I've, yeah. I've, I've not. It's not hope. I don't. It's like I know. Like, I don't have that, like, deep, natural confidence that a lot of people have. And I think yes. that's been my limitation. And, and being able to accept the fact that sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith. And it's an active thing you have to do. And, and it's an yeah. active thing you have to, like, foster. That's what's that, changed in me. That's incredible to hear because I, I came from the opposite background where I was raised in a Protestant home that was deeply faithful and religious. My mm -hmm. parents still to this day. And as I've grown into an adult... I, you know, through high school and early college, I still would call myself faithful and religious and Christian. And I've, I've transitioned more into what I would label as agnostic where, you know, I don't, and I say, you know, and my parents, I consider the best people on the planet. I have an incredible relationship with them and they would Same. lay their life down for the Lord. Right. And, and I may not, necessarily believe some of the things they believe, but we can always get together and have good conversations. And as I've gone into an adult and become more agnostic, I would say like kind of science-based where I'm not, I can't sit here and like the difference between ag agnosticism and atheism is I'm not going to sit here and tell you there is no God. I certainly don't mm -hmm. know that. I have no proof. I can't say that there isn't, but I also have a lot of issues with in the, uh, you know, organized religion and just the institution mm -hmm. of religion throughout Absolutely. the decades and the millennium. Government. Government, but but 
to go back to the piece you spoke about is faith and having a belief in something I think is, is so important. And I think that because I was raised that way, it really has informed and created kind of a confidence in me and just helped me have, uh, live a life as an adult that, you know, I, I haven't thankfully had to deal with a lot of those types of issues where, and it's weird because I've kind of, I've had similar, I've had this issue later in life where as I've become more agnostic and skeptical, I, I guess skeptical is the right word. I've become more skeptical of, skeptical of a lot of things. I start to, it starts to make me waver a little bit where like when you have that anchor, that rock, that faith in God or that relationship with Jesus or whatever, I think humans use that. You can draw upon that for strength. Yeah. Whether or not you believe the theological piece of it, like whether there is a God or not, I think humans biologically need something they can anchor a belief to and kind of hold on to, to help them through difficult times. So in your case where you were growing up and it was like, it's not like your parents were doing anything wrong. It just sounds like Mm -hmm. they were good parents. They just weren't like, Hey, this is, this is the way it is. This is what you need to believe, believe in. Absolutely. And and so it might've, that anxiety might've manifested that like, well, I don't know, like, what is what? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like my big problem was just being, trying to be rational all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, But like rationality, you can rationalize your way into anything. You can Mm -hmm. literally create any sort of, any sort of belief uh, yeah. through rationality and, and especially you rationalize you yourself into a heroin addiction. If yeah, you exactly. Yeah. That's what people do. <laughs> right. Like, uh, people say, you know, there's a lot of irrational behavior, but it just depends on what you're, uh, what you're basing, basing your rationality on what's your rationale yeah. is. So, um, and when it is to try to be right, uh, and it is to try to find out what is like the smartest thing to do. Um, what is actually factual, not necessarily truthful. Um, yeah then it becomes it's really easy to feel like things are very meaningless um yes. and like, like ni- nihilism in a sense right yeah, yeah 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 there's a lot of there's a lot of uh i'm i'm afraid honestly there was a long time where i was afraid to read any sort of like nihilistic any sort of negative super rational like the most rational shit that i can that i can really read is like stoicism because sure. it's just like chill you're just a person don't worry about it <laughs> Love it. Yeah. um but like there's some shit that's so rational that it's like makes you want to just kill yourself it's a downer dude yeah, yeah. <laughs> like what's it all for and that that's kind of what i've experienced uh, you know in my my later years is that battling with that kind of gravitating towards nihilism especially when you spend enough time online farming content making videos mm-hmm. there is an element of the internet that as everybody knows kind of surfaces the worst parts of humanity For to sure. the top the things that will get the emotional reactions like you know i do brainworms content a lot of the content i make is criticism around people that are just behaving yeah. abhorrently and that can give you a skewed view on the world and i have to constantly right. remind myself like this planet isn't filled with just these people. There are some incredible people out there. They just don't go viral on X. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And so I'm curious. I love that you've you've gotten into reading and doing some deep work where you're just you're trying to, I guess, just expand your expand your outlook. I mean, I, I, that's why I love reading. I mean, it's incredible the amount of information that's out there that can help reshape and mold the the lens that we view the world through and i think that's i think that's cool would you say that in you know in the in the last several years that you've been doing some of this reading has there been an element of faith that's been introduced that's religious or not religious or or what is it not to get too deep into religion just yeah, curious no. if there's um, been like a god element to it or not I don't know. I don't really know. I, I definitely don't. Um, I definitely don't. I have nothing wrong with uh, j- like people practicing any sort of religion. Obviously, same. Yeah. Same. Um, I think that like it, like anything you find comfort in is is is. I, it's it's mind boggling to me that people can know that they are right about something that, like that. That's that, that's fuck. You sound like you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. That's like the it, way it I feel about it. Yeah. Like how do you how do you know? But that that's the problem. Though. That's my problem. That's my issue. And. Um, from all the books, I've, I've always been a very avid reader. Uh, one thing I used to brag to people about when I was a child was, uh, when I was in the third grade, I had a 12th grade reading level. Um, and I would tell people all the time, like my sister's friends would come over on you, huh? Dude, hardcore, bro. (laughs) I was homeschooled and my mom is like a teacher. Um, I was homeschooled too, bro. Yeah. She set that shit up for me. So like, 
I, I graduated when I was 15 years old. And like when I, I was, Jesus. So I just wasn't set up socially and I didn't sure. have faith. I can figure stuff out extremely quickly and be right and yeah. argue like fucking nobody's business and debate yeah. and figure out, you know, what, and, and generally try to find, um, you know, what, what's right not necessarily morally, but what like makes the most sense and like logically makes sense. Exactly. Kind of. Logic yeah, yeah. It's really important. And I, I, I used to read a ton of, uh, of, um, like the first shit I ever read, which is just like the young man. It's super high appeal to young men it is stoicism. I already mentioned that. It's just yeah. like, you know, we don't care about, we're stoic. We just, we're men and we don't care. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And that was like the first, uh, that was the first shit that I read that where I started to kind of, understand like what faith sort of was uh and then and then and then it just kind of i started reading a lot of the ex uh transcendentalists and um like ralph waldo emerson i feel like he's probably my favorite author uh, him and soren kirkgaard i don't like saying his name but if i have a son i'll name him soren though for sure kirkgaard, kirkgaard. now are you one of these are you one of these freaks that can like <clears throat> read a book a week you're on like making yeah. Twitter threads, like the 52 books I read in 2023. Yeah. I'm like, bitch, it takes me six months to read like <laughs> half of a fucking self-help book or like a quarter of a J.R. Yeah. Tolkien book, bro. Um, Yeah. But you, like you said, you, you f sound like somebody who can read quickly and comprehend a lot while you're reading. I forget stuff very quickly, but I definitely can comprehend. Uh, I, I, def I can definitely comprehend what I'm reading. Um. I think at least I feel like at least I don't really know. So so if you're cooking through like a like a say like a dense philosophy book, something a little denser than like fiction, how long you is it taking you to read through something like that if you're if you're giving it a good bid? Depends on how old it is and how like it depends on the time period. If it's an that old your, Greek book, if it's baroque, it takes a little longer. If yeah. it's if it's fucking some shit by uh uh if it's republic it, uh, it's taken me a long time to fucking understand yeah. exactly what the hell those motherfuckers are saying. Yeah. Uh, but like, I feel, I feel that like Ralph Waldo Emerson, him, Henry David Thoreau, right in there, that sweet spot. It's easy, yeah. easy, so easy to understand. And also, um, the, the plague, uh, what the fuck's that guy's name? I always forget his name. Um, I don't remember. We sound like such douches right now talking about books. <laughs> I fucking love it. I know. I know. So everyone listening is like, oh, God, wrap it up. And I will. I just I get such a hard on around this shit because I'm at that. You know, I'm 38 now. So this is my this is my creme de la creme, like philosophy, thinking about life, asking yeah. questions, yeah, comparing nihilism and faith and religion. I love mm -hmm. all this shit. I could talk about it for Albert Camus. For years. Who? Albert Camus. The uh, Albert the Camus. Albert Camus. Uh, the, the, um, yeah. Like just deciding to not kill yourself every day gives you meaning to life. Pretty much, yeah. Would I that's rather a... drink coffee or kill myself? Coffee every time. There you go. Boom. <laughs> On most and, days, at least. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It, it's it's a, it's definitely a slippery slope. I generally don't talk about any of this stuff online. This is the most I think I've ever talked about books online. Well, uh, I'm I'm glad that I was the recipient of that conversation. I'd love to get some some recommendations in private from you, but for the sake of yeah. the audience, those watching or listening, I did want to ask you. <sighs> You work out a little bit, you know, yeah. I follow you on Twitter slash X and you know, I've, I've known, I think you have a home gym and yeah. it's, it seems like you strength train a little bit consistently, at least from what I gather, from what I can see, I've seen the, the shirtless thirst traps you post online <laughs> sometimes. And I mean, yeah. you got, was, you got a tight little body on you. No homo. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. But I'm curious, uh, to keep it general, why do you work out? personally um i work out because i like the way that i feel when i work out mm -hmm. I, I feel like my body's a machine uh and i look at it from that perspective in that uh you know it logically makes sense to exercise consistently it logically yep. makes sense fr from the from every single level it makes sense to exercise there is not a single way to rationalize not exercising i mean there is but it's all just hedonism right like you, you, you have to just be, you have to just be like caught up in something that's just so worthless and meaningless and, and adds yeah. absolutely nothing to your identity. You losers. Um, <laughs> but, uh, whereas I, um, I shoot deer and eat their flesh. I pick up weights and I put them down. Yes. Yeah, exactly. No, uh, like from a, just a, like a biochemical level, it makes sense to exercise. It makes you feel good. It gives you energy. Yeah. Uh, it's good for your body, working your heart, good for your body. Uh, yeah. From a uh, you know a social level, 
people respect people who take care of themselves you become mm -hmm. more attractive um yep. that that it, all these things compound in every single way towards being a happy healthy human being there and is literally no downside except the no downside. small amount of discomfort you have to go through during the workout which relatively small relatively small which coincidentally once you get in a rhythm you almost start to look forward to like oh, you know absolutely. what i mean like, yeah. yeah so that was it's a like very good answer off. that was a very, yeah well yeah I and mean, you could either work out or fire one out five to six times a day <laughs> you're probably getting the same bpms one one uh one thing that i tell people a lot too uh especially people who like just don't seem to understand or there's no like rat i can't really com communicate with them very well which is a lot yeah. of people um <laughs> i uh i like to tell them it's inspiration or desperation one yeah. day you will realize you are wrong and you will be very desperate and it, so be in, be inspired now <clears throat> do it out of inspiration uh because mm -hmm. there's one there's only one side that's correct and that is the and side of health and fitness a hundred percent. And I do, I do think there's a, an unfortunate reality that just biologically speaking, if you aren't able to course correct over a long enough period yeah. of time, it is almost impossible to get back on to the path yep. and whatever that is. It's not to say that like, no matter where you're at, you can always make improvements to kind of steer yourself in the direction that is better for your mental health, your, your, your physical health, all these things. But you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, yeah, I just, I love that you feel so strongly about it because I, I do too. And, you know, I, more recently, I, I occasionally talk about it online. Obviously my content isn't like workout stuff. I made one yeah. video at the end of last year that was veered away from my normal content where I talked about, you know, a couple principles I live my life by. And obviously mm -hmm. discipline and fitness is one of those things that has helped me immensely in, in my life. And, you know, I, I grew up, I was a, different than you i'm sure i was a i was a heavy kid so i was one of those guys who just struggled with weight when he was a kid super heavy i was a big guy played football got into powerlifting and a lot of the reason i started was based around insecurity right it's like or in sports like i knew my coach was like oh you gotta lift i'm like all right i'll try it and then i realized hey i'm really strong so i got into to that but my whole life was kind of a roller coaster of being a heavier kid yeah. and strong, but wanting to get leaner for confidence reasons and just going up and down. And as I've gotten older, as you age, as you do, and I think I'm probably like a decade older than you, late twenties, right? Something like that. 27. 27. Yeah, exactly. I'm about a decade older. It's, it's, as I've aged, it's funny to see how like fitness and working out takes different forms in your life where when I was younger, college years in my twenties, it was very vanity driven um, you know, you're not thinking about injury there's, and as you get a bit older, it's like, now it's, now it's a necessity, dude. Like, you know, if I, like, I, I need to do this to continue to live a full life Absolutely. and be able to feel good and play with my son as he gets older and throw ball, like all these things. And I just think it's so, it's so interesting to me because it is so neglected i know there's like the fitness industry which is hyper crazy fitness and that can be a turnoff for some people but i think there just needs to be this middle ground where people that are in that camp that are intimidated by it or have never worked out before like there just needs just you need to just dip your toe in the water because the clock is ticking and if yeah. you're 50 years old all of a sudden and you've never worked out and you have the hip problem and the knee problem and the neck problem and like it, it's hard to come back from that. So the earlier, the better it, it, yeah, for me. I, and I think the thing that, that I've always thought about, which I'm, I don't know if this works for people, but like for, for someone who's like trying to get into it, um, yeah. I like to just scare the shit out of them. That's what I like to Love do. That. Cause it's <laughs> like, like it, it always falls back to inspiration or desperation, right? You are all going to die. Like we have, everybody Correct. has one thing in common. It's like how ma how can you maximize your life to be, uh, even if you just want to maximize happiness, like who gives a fuck about money and success? Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't right. matter. Like that really doesn't matter. But feeling good for as much as time as possible and suffering as little as possible. Yes. Um, to be able to manage all those things, you have to be inspired and you have to actually act and do stuff. You can't just let things happen to you and then react to them, uh, which is what I think most people do. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's what I do a lot of the time as well. Probably 80% of the time. So I think seriously. we all do. And it's yeah. exacerbated by our phones and the, the exactly, technological yeah. age where we're constantly yeah. being pinged with notifications and all of these things.
So I think uh, for someone like, cause I didn't start working out until I was probably <clears throat> 16, 15, something like that. And I okay. was, I was pretty chubby right before I, um, I weighed like 145 pounds and I was like five, three and yep. then, uh, or five, one, I think. And then I had a growth spurt and then I weighed like 131 pounds and I was five eleven. at least. So like I lost weight, <laughs> got taller. Um, and then, and then, and then started working out. I could be, I remember I could bench press, uh, 135 pounds once. And that was crazy. I was like, oh my God, this is my body weight. I mentioned the and two then a, plates. Dude, it's quite a milestone. Plates. And then a year later I was doing, um, I, I, I literally peaked in one year and I haven't gotten any stronger. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I could do, I actually, I've gotten a little bit stronger. I could do 185, five by five. Um, and I weighed nice. 150 about there. That's good. Yeah. Um, so like I got really into it and I was like, why doesn't everybody work out? This is so fulfilling and fun. And I'm doing it with my yeah. friends. Like this is fucking great. And it's just because like, it's just like anything else. Like, why don't I, why, why do, why do I drink Dr. Pepper? It's like, cause I want to, it's like, <laughs> yeah. why don't you work out? Well, I just don't want to, I'd, I'd right. rather do this. Um, and I think explaining to people like reframing it, uh, like you see just something that is similar to any addiction or any rut you get into, whether it's like drugs or smoking is a really good one because it's been a huge historical problem. It's like the, the predecessor to obesity essentially. Um, uh, because nobody was like they nobody saw it as a problem, and then everyone realized it was a problem pretty pretty much all at once, which I think is going to happen with obesity. Uh, I hope, um, and it's well, really I, easy. You just don't I think smoke. we've already reached that point, but I think so. But but the problem is like with smoking, it's like you don't have to smoke. Like like right. the problem with food is like we still have to eat to subsist exactly. and survive. So it becomes a real tough gray area for people because especially in a culture that makes it so easy to eat in excess. And not only that, but the, you know, the rabbit hole of the ingredients that are going in our food and stuff like this. But I totally agree with that point you were making. I think it's just pointing that out to people. uh, And then, you know, seeing like, eventually you you will have regrets once they start showing, which they probably won't show the commercials because of like fat acceptance and stuff, but just showing (laughs) how bad, I mean, they do show the commercials. It's called my 600 pound life. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, that, it's an entertainment honest, show, though. Yeah, yeah it's, it's commodified. Inter- They're commodifying <laughs> suffering and, and, and obesity, which is so crazy, dude. Uh, and I've, yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, but it just, just inspire, like, it really just comes down to just how can you make someone um, see that they will be happy by doing something that just makes so much sense, whether it's yeah. not smoking, uh, which I smoke cigars sometimes. I enjoy a good cigar occasionally, sure. but, like, no, I'm not addicted by any means. No. I mean, um, there's a little bit of degeneracy in all of us, I think. Like, for sure. I, I have the Dude, same conversation with people about, I mean, the cake, bro. I know it's you're, fun. I know you're, you don't drink. I obviously, when I'm, I enjoy a glass of whiskey when I'm recording or whatever it is, I'm having a glass of whiskey right now. Uh, alcohol is one of the most abused and destructive substances on the planet. I yeah, mean, like, for it just sure. ruins, ruins lives. Yeah. And, you know, food, you know, food in a different way can be that same thing. Everything comes back to a, a finding a balance that makes sense and just right. having the self-awareness to know when that thing that you like, like if you drank 25 Dr. Peppers a day, that would probably be problematic, but you can have one a day, mm-hmm. one yeah. every other day. You're going to sure. be fine because you take care of the other aspects of your life. You work yeah. out. You're not, you know what I mean? And, and there just needs to be this, this self-awareness to find the balance with the things that you know aren't good for you in excess, but the, you know, and the interesting part is, you know, even things that are good for us in excess become bad. You can die from drinking too much water. Like it, it's sure. true with everything in life. Mm-hmm. And I find for me going back to the working out piece. And I know I talked about like the, the vanity piece and the health and the way your body feels. It all boils down ultimately in my life as a 38 year old man, I've gone through phases where I've been. F- felt great, felt like I was on top of the world. And I've gone into the, you know, the sine wave of life where you go through that phase where you're depressed and it's like, you barely want to get out of bed. We all kind of have our own struggles, these things going on in life. The one thing that has never let me down is taking care of my body. Physical fitness Absolutely. is the best antidepressant on the fucking planet. For sure. And, you know, I'm not going to speak to outlier cases of all these, whatever. I'm not trying to say depression doesn't exist or be up here like Andrew Tate. But there, step one, if you do not like your life and are in a position where you want to find some sort of change or do something, start taking care of your body. 
Yeah, and for sure. Everything else will it, not everything up, but that that's I mean, this is your fucking vehicle, bro. Mm -hmm. It's the stupidest analogy, but if you're driving a nice car, you were gifted this beautiful car and you fill it with fucking Crisco, like it's not gonna drive. Mm -hmm. Your body's no different. It will, but not for long. Yeah, it will, but it's going to shit the bed after a couple miles. Yeah, right? that's the yeah. problem. I think the problem is humans are so adaptive and so good at just fucking themselves over for really long periods of time mm -hmm. until you have to eventually act out of desperation. Like that's that's what it always boils back down to. That for me, it's like, do I want to clean clean the, my house? No, of course not. But eventually, I'm going to have to. You have to. Yeah, yeah. out of desperation because I have to. Uh, I think so it's, it's like, a testament to how resilient the human body is. Like you oh, can yeah. literally beat the piss out of your body with a liter of two liters of vodka a day for like 50 fucking years before yeah. your liver is finally like, you know what? I've had enough. <laughs> like, Cirrhosis. That's a law. Like you can beat the shit out of your body and it'll be like, this sucks. I hate it, but I'm going to keep on trucking. Like just give it a little bit of love, like just a little bit and it will reward you in space yeah. every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think just, I don't know, maybe it comes back down to even just being having faith in yourself and just believing that you can that yeah. you can do whatever you need to do. And even if it's just be happy, um, you don't really need to exercise to, to be happy. You do need to physically be able to move, though, for sure. Yes. Like, you, you need to be able to move. Like, you go on a walk a day with your wife or girlfriend or best friend or whatever. It's yeah. fucking, it's really all you need to do. You Like, that's the thing, too. I think that just the gap is just too big that a lot of people, a lot of fitness people, they just pilot like it's traumatizing almost in a way Pe yes. people are as adaptive as people are they're also very easy to to just be tra traumatized uh and people use yeah, the word be trauma turned off so by much something. yeah because yeah. it's overwhelming or intimidating yeah and that was one of the points i tried to make in the video i made talking about the stuff is like you can just you can start by just taking just take a walk like three times a week 20 minutes 30 minutes like that's an unbelievable starting place for people who have who are at baseline zero right I was like, and I made the analogy, like, listen, if you, if you walked for 30 minutes, five times a week, that's two and a half hours. That's the length of the dark night by Christopher Nolan, yeah. a beautiful just movie. Walking. Everybody would sit down and watch dark night. Wouldn't think twice about it, but you can't just go outside and walk for 30 minutes, a couple of times a week, the same length of time. It was like, I don't have the time. It's so much work. It's like, motherfucker, you sit down and watch Netflix for two hours a night. Like, so there's the, the barrier to entry is low. Like, it, like all you got to do is start moving around a little bit more. What's probably the the hardest thing for you to have discipline with when it comes to health and fitness? Is it the working out piece, the dietary piece, or sleeping? Um, Probably the dietary aspect, j just yeah. because I like Same. Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> how bad is the Dr. Pepper addiction? Fill us in. What are we doing? Like how many cans a week average? What are we talking? I'm at, I'm at one a day, a full okay. can a day. So that's, that's doable. That's reasonable. I think. Yeah, that's absolutely. Fine. It's like, 100%. I'll drink maybe, I'll, I'll drink maybe two, um, uh, a day, but I'll finish half for each one. So interesting. So I'm okay. very wasteful. You um, like it fresh. You don't want that swell yeah. at the end of a warm yeah, exactly. Dr. Pepper. Yeah, it's four people you. drink. I don't want that. <laughs> um, that's my, yeah, the diet. I mean, that, I feel like for a lot of people, that's the same way for years. I was always very good at the lifting part and would could, couldn't figure out why I couldn't get lean or lose weight. I was always strong and bigger genetically. I was just born that way. I just didn't have the patience or the discipline to dial the diet in, but I mean, yeah. that's 90% of the battle when you're trying I, to stay yeah, lean. Or, I've always had a problem with gaining weight. Like the most I've ever weighed was, I weigh 157 now, I think, so I've lost like yeah. three pounds, but the most yeah. I've ever weighed is 164. Yeah. Wow. The most I've okay. ever weighed in my whole life. So we've, that's crazy. We've always had the opposite problem. I weighed 262 pounds in seventh grade. <laughs> oh my God. That's crazy. I was, a, I was a big bitch. I honestly don't have a, 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 I don't have many memories of being below 200, but um, <laughs> yeah. Sleep is another one we won't get into, but yeah. Have, having a good night's sleep is game changing. I found recently, I've, I went through a phase a couple of years ago where I was burning the candle at both ends, kind of doing a lot of degen crypto shit, the YouTube stuff. I was staying up all hours of the night all the time, just kind of like pushing it for whatever reason and was wondering why I was like depressed, feeling shitty. And it's like, man, I fixed my sleep schedule, got my circadian rhythm back in check and was, you know, started working out consistently. And it was like my life 
flipped 180. Mm-hmm. I was like, holy shit. Is this what it feels supposed to feel like to be a human? I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I mean, if you if you can't get your fitness dialed in and you can't get your diet dialed in, as long as you're sleeping good, you'll still live to be the average age of a human being. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Sure. That is, yeah, yeah. It's crazy so. that I think it more recently has come back into the spotlight with like the Huberman Labs podcast and a lot of these people who have gone down the deep rabbit sleep holes hygiene. of how- yeah, sleep hygiene and how 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 much it really affects your health and well being. I I've spoken about this on one of my channels, but I actually I tape my mouth at night. I'm a mouth taper because okay. I am a mouth breather. So like normally when I sleep, it's like like this. Yeah. It makes me snore. It dries my shit out. And there's a lot of research around when you sleep with your mouth closed, it forces you to breathe through your nose, obviously, which helps moisten the air. It, it increases your VO2, or excuse me, increases the oxygenation of your blood. It eliminates my snoring. So it's the best thing that ever happened to my wife. And, and I wake up in the morning, I'll get like seven hours of sleep and feel incredible. Whereas like I could sometimes sleep for seven or eight hours. And I don't know if just the quality of sleep was worse. Like before I was taping my mouth and still just feel kind of groggy and shitty. So yeah. It's kind of a niche thing, and I feel weird. My wife always makes fun of me because she's like, you look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> she's like, like with hostage tape over your mouth when you're sleeping. I look at you, and I'm just like, oh, who's this, who's this loser next to me? But, hey, it makes me feel good, so I do it. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I, uh, I've, I've, I've done that before, but I, I tend to not be a um, mouth breather just in general uh, for sleeping, luckily enough. So Yeah, yeah. That's pr- I feel like it, it just some people are and some people, some people aren't. Like some people just comfortably sleep with their, with their mouth shut. Obviously, if mm-hmm. you're a little bit heavier, that changes things and it can make it harder and you tend to be a mouth breather. But even in times in my life when I've been relatively leaner, like I'm in – on the scale of my life, the sine wave of my fitness, I, I'm in pretty reasonable shape right now. I still will just be a gaping fucking one of these. So I tape it up, tape that baby shut. What about uh, what about supplements? I'll, I'll I'll tell you what I what, what I take, and I'll, I'll ask yeah. if you. If, what, I'll see what you take. What kind of supplements yeah, yeah. you take? Please. So the most important supplements that I take that I've recently realized how important important they are. I love this. Recently important. We realize how important they are. <laughs> Um, the number one, I weed, most, I weed a lot. I, the, dude, weeding, number one supplement, weeding, <laughs> weeding book. supplement for my brain. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to, uh, I still take a lot of stuff, uh, but now I take a probiotic. Nice. I take, uh, a B complex. Sure. Methylated B vitamins. Yes. I take ashwagandha. Yep. I take, um, L-theanine, taurine, and acetylcysteine. Love it. Those three amino acids, and then I take a shitload of uh, a, a adenosyl meth- methionine. S- Sammy, it's like a it's a it's another amino acid. Adenosyl methionine. I've definitely heard of it. What's the what is that one allegedly supposed to help? So it, it is it is just another amino acid, but sure. um, it is it helps uh, with like methylation, the the methylation part of metabolizing B vitamins. Okay. So it, it like I remember the first time I heard about the MTHFR gene where like your your body you can't you, folic acid is like excitatory and it fucks you up and it causes inflammation yes. and stuff. Yeah. Um and folic acid is in ev- is in everything. Um that like they add it artificially so people get B9. I've taken methylated vitamins for a very long time, but methionine is an amino acid that like I think it's in eggs maybe and I don't ever eat eggs and okay. I've I rarely eat when I take my vitamins. So I'm just getting this ma- mega dose of methylated vitamins uh, without methionine, which I don't exactly know what it does like chemically in your body in regard to the methylation process, but I know it is integral uh, and the vitamins do not properly methylate without adequate so methionine. You're just, so you're just pissing them out, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, you, yeah, yeah. I think it's so. I'm sure helping your body us. use utilize it, whatever it is that yeah, makes, and, it bi- makes it bioavailable for you. Exactly, and, yeah. and and also helps balance uh, your <clears throat> neurotransmitters as well. And I I sure. genuinely believe, like with the whole anxiety thing and just feeling like shit and just like being like mm-hmm. being able to just panic like that and literally go into a, 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 a full on adrenaline dump just for if someone rings the doorbell. Um, Jesus, it doesn't. That does not happen anymore. That does not happen. And you think that's directly related to some of the supplements you've been taking? I, I think it's 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 the methylation, figuring out how to actually use B vitamins 
I think and that's so you, what it is. It sounds like you've spent a lot of time researching and looking into acetylcholines and the method of action and things that affect that pathway in your body. And yeah. you've experimented with these things that yep. act directly on that. And it sounds like you've had some pretty good results. Yeah, dude. Cold showers help a lot. Okay. Um, but they eventually, it stops helping. Um, sure. Lithium. You get, your I've, body adapts, yeah. Yep, your body adapts. Yeah. I've, I've, had, uh, I've had a positive effect with lithium. It helps a little bit. But it also is kind of like makes you just kind of feel like stupid, just kind of weak. Isn't that so? So is that is that is that an, an RX? Is that a script? Because I know lithium's like diagnosed for bipolar too. Sometimes, Am I yeah, yeah, is yeah. That right? It's not RX. It's uh, you can just take lithium orotate. It's just a. I mean, it's you can just, just take a, it. Yeah, you can use buy it at the store if you want to. Yeah, you can also get uh, like a lot of mineral water will have lithium in it as well, and there's a, a correlation between violence and the amount of lithium in water as well, which is pretty cool. L- higher really? levels of lithium, lower levels of violent crime. <laughs> higher levels of lithium, lower levels. So yeah. we just need to be pumping lithium into the water supply. That's, in some of these that's my in, in that's Chicago and think. Baltimore. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Give them all the lithium or no. <laughs> um, I think there was a study in Texas or something like that. I forget exactly, but um, yeah, lithium or take just like a small dose, like a small le- sub therapeutic dose, like a really small dose. It just yeah. kind of takes the edge off a little bit. It's, it's pretty safe. Um, at least for me, I'm yeah. not a doctor. Uh, um, yeah. Ashwagandha. I, epic. Ashwagandha, please. It, I, that's one I've looked into and haven't taken yet. I'm curious what your experience with that is. It's been about the same. They they all have like a, a a particular effect that it's like noticeable and it's good and I'm I'm solid. But it it eventually is like a big, it's it's parabolic, right? Like it just like sure. uh, you know it 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 comes down, it comes down. It, it it's great effect and then it just comes down. The only with one everything that, in your body, your receptors get used to it and they start being less receptive to it. Basically, yes, because yeah. I think the problem is just at the very root level, which is the way my body produces neurotransmitters. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So it sounds like a lot of your supplementation is based around trying to mitigate that issue with the the neurotransmitters and the yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, that's that's why. So oh, and also just because I would like to be you know as I like to feel like there's no no stone left unturned. I like to at the end of every single day be like, yes, okay, I read, I played the guitar, I ran the business, I made the YouTube video, I called my parents, I read my book, uh, I took my supplement. I ate a good meal, and then I cleaned. I don't clean. We got people that, that for me. Yeah, we got a cleaner. It's fine. Yeah, but I like to check yeah. everything off I possibly can, and, and supplements are, are one of those things. Uh, same. I weirdly, so I went years with just like protein powders. Would take this thing, that thing, kind of bounce around. It wasn't until about a year ago that I really started on a consistent supplement regimen, mostly just like basic vitamin stuff that I did a lot of research on and have been experimenting with. But I found that like with anything, when you can do something consistently every single day, day after day and check that box and feel good about doing that, those small wins compound into other things, right? Like it's, it's the, the, that old, that old adage of, you know, if you wake up and make your bed every morning, and you have that small win when you start, it sets the stage yeah. for the rest of the day that allows you to do bigger, better things. Now, I still fucking despise making the bed. <laughs> fucking hate it. Don't do it sometimes. But I will take some supplements. Uh, my main thing, very uh, creatine, five milligrams a day, every day. To me, that's one of the most researched backed supplements you can take. Helps. There's a there's a neuro piece to it. It actually is a, is a neuroprotectant in addition to the fact that it can make you stronger and uh, have more endurance in the gym and can fill your muscles a little bit more. I would say there's no reason for anyone that's active physically and working out not to be taking five milligrams of creatine a day. Do you mean five grams? Five grams, excuse me, five grams, yes. Five milligrams is not that much. (laughs) Yeah, five milligrams, yeah, five grams. That's a dust, Uh, That's that's a light dusting. Boof that shit, swish it down with some water. Oh, yeah. And then the rest of it's mostly... Vitamin C, D, K, uh, I take ub- ubiquinol, which is like uh, the active form of CoQ10, te- which is yep. supposed to help with cardiovascular health. Mm-hmm. Um, so, some zinc, um, some resveratrol, some other stuff that's supposed to help with cardiovascular health. I also take um, natokinase, which is supposed to be an anticoagulant, helps with okay. plaque buildup and just uh, it's kind of like a natural, almost like a natural blood decoagulant that helps just for someone like me, that's bigger. And I've all, you know, I've 
just generally dealt with kind of like borderline high blood pressure. It, it, there's a lot of research that shows it really helps with um, trying to avoid the silent killer of like thromb thrombuses and strokes mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And I've really seen a really good uh, results in my blood pressure. I've recently gotten my blood pressure down into the normal range after years of kind of teetering and I've never had to have any pharmaceutical interventions. Do you get migraines? So, uh, no, no. I you know should, you uh, struggle with that a little bit. Oh, dude, I have one right now. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, you just, that's oh, why I keep man. going like this. Oh, man, I'm sorry. That's it's all good. I, I pop, I pop like, I popped a few times. That's another vitamin I take, Tylenol. Tylenol, yeah. The yes, vitamin sir. of the gods, the all um, fix all. What yeah. I was going to say that is uh, like high blood pressure. There's also a link to high blood pressure and methylation as well. You should mm -hmm. look into, uh, look, you should look into methylation. In methylation as well. Yeah, I definitely will. I yeah. definitely will. Sammy, uh, methionine, very, 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 very potent amino acid. <sighs> Man, I, low side effects. Shit. I, I could talk about this shit for days. The, to, to round off my my trip is uh, at night, magnesium glyconate. Big fan Same. of magnesium. That's a lot of research behind that being vital for so many body functions and a large percentage of people just naturally being deficient. I mean, if you think about, you know, a lot of people will say, or some people will say, well, if you just ate a healthy, balanced diet, you would get all that you need. And it's like, okay, cool. That might have been true, like, a hundred years ago, like when we were still farming crops that weren't mm -hmm. being homogenized and fucking shit on with pesticides nonstop. But like the average American diet just does not have the same nutrients that it did 50, 20 years ago, 50 years ago, hundred years ago. So I oh, see yeah. no problem in supplementing in areas that you might be deficient. And I've noticed in, uh, along the same lines that you spoke to a minute ago, where you, you really noticed a, uh, a, a benefit as far as like your excitatory responding to doorbells getting anxiety and, and, and that, and that element. I also not to that level, but I I've gone through phases where I deal with a very kind of like a general anxiety disorder, not like the panic attack or like the, Ooh, that type of sound, but just this yep. under this low level hum, this kind of like nonstop, just like, right pestering anxiety that makes me very uncomfortable and it's very hard to relax or sit still or take a deep breath, that type of thing. And since I've really fixed my sleep and continue the workouts and tried to round out my vitamin supplementation, I feel more even keeled at 38 than I ever have in my entire life previous. So, and I think that's, Dude, that's awesome. probably part, probably part, partly due to some of the supplementation. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the generalized anxiety thing. I definitely, I definitely am very, I'm familiar with that as well. And w one thing that's pretty funny, just just to speak on what you just said in, in terms of how much you've noticed a difference in that. I um, I have these like uh, like stress inhales sometimes where I feel like there's a there's a feeling that is attached to a panic attack, which is called impending doom. It's like a sense of impending doom. Um, and a lot of people are familiar with that feeling, but like I feel that feeling sometimes but there's no anxiety associated with it. It's just like an instant feeling. And I'm like, Oh, that's not good. And then and that, does that come out of nowhere? Or? It comes out of nowhere that used to make me extremely anxious. And I would start to, yeah, I'd have to walk around and like pace for hours or whatever. Um, and just would like ruin my days. Um, but now I still feel that sometimes, but it's just like, I can feel literally like I'm having about to have a panic attack and just yeah. not, physiologically give a fuck if that makes sense like you've almost trained yourself to learn how to deal with it i don't even think it's training i think it's more so just balancing my body out uh now in, in terms of neurotransmitters and things like that like I, I think i've trained myself to feel that feeling i think that that feeling that i'm feeling is like a like a reaction to some kind of stimulus or something like that where i'm like maybe i'm not breathing all the way uh i'm not breathing deeply or or i'm you know something's wrong or, or whatever. And then I just feel that I'm like, okay, now it's time to panic. And then we just, you know, go panic for a few hours. We'll be all right. And then, uh, but now it's like, I can feel that same strong level of anxiety, but there's no physical symptoms. There's no physical aspect to it. It's just a feeling that's not associated with high blood pressure, pounding heart, um, like true, you know, I'm going to kill, I'm ready to like, defend myself. Right. Like that's okay. what it is at the end of so the day. It, it's like, it, it doesn't manifest as physically as it used to. Yes. That's Which amazing. Is cool. Now yeah, I think it's normal. I think that's, that's how normal that's people progress, feel. baby. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's normal anxiety. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I, I, Cause I, yeah. I, mean, I, I wonder, I just wonder how, like, dude, one of the first things I did when I felt that way, like many, many years ago, I read yeah. online other people who had been dealing with it for like 10 years. And sure. I was like, 
this is terrible. This is normal for some people. This Can't is fucking insane. do this for insane. 10 years, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's like, I'm not going to do this. I'm 19 years old. I'm not going to do this yeah. shit for 10 fucking years. I'll kill myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But I did it for about eight. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Save the last two, baby. Yes, sir. Good and for I still, you, man. You know, I, I have, I'm by no means like a different person, but at the same time, I'm absolutely like, you know, a, I'm, a I'm definitely, person. I'm doing fine. Yeah. I love that. I mean, it, it's just such a testament to, you know, hearing you talk about some of this anxiety that you've had in the past and contrasting that with what I've seen you do over the last few years and the things that you've built, the companies, the YouTube channel, and not only that, but just the, your demeanor, the way you treat people. Uh, it's great. It's, it, it's inspiring, honestly, because I know a lot of people, even those that some that are listening, you know, who doesn't deal with anxiety at some capacity, yeah. many people, fortunately for them, not at the level that you have, but it, it just goes to show that there's always room to, you know, even, even in kind of like the dire straits, the depths of despair of some sort of element of your life that is really dragging you down. There's always uh room to take the time to try and figure out how can I make incremental steps to get myself out of this hole, to find a way to get better. You sound very researched. You've obviously spent a lot of time looking in to the issues you've had, issues that you've had and figuring out ways you can anecdotally try and solve those through different mm -hmm. supplementations, through working out all these things. You've built businesses, the YouTube channel. So I just think that's, it's so cool because a lot of people, you know, when you have an audience online, so many people don't get to see that side of the people that they watch. You know, they see Oompaville, Caleb, who logs on. And I know I know you've talked about these things before. Um, obviously, you do some longer form stuff, so there's opportunities to do that. But I'm sure there's a handful of your audience that has never seen anything from you outside of maybe the main YouTube channel. And yeah, it's just great to know that, you know, people that are crushing it in the eyes of many that follow you are still dealing with crippling personal oh, issues yeah. at all times. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I think that's absolutely. ubiquitous. Yeah. yeah, I you're I think you're I think you're correct. Um, and yeah, I think I think that having that uh, having the whole like anxiety thing has really made me just respect people to another level. Sure. Um, and, and just like think, it, I I think that I mean I don't think I had a lot of empathy before that genuinely. Like I just didn't okay. understand why people like why don't you work out? Like why? Yeah. You know? And now I'm like oh. People can be crip. I ca I can't even go to the grocery store on my own. Yeah. So like that's something that ninety nine point nine nine percent of everyone can do, uh, and there's very clearly a lot of people who can't control their lives in a way where they're you know feeling good about themselves all the time or able to eat right or whatever whatever it may be. So it's like I think it's really just blasted me down to uh, be able to like re. I, I think it's a good thing. I think the whole anxiety thing is like a in general just a sort of a, a positive. Um, well, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? That yeah, yeah. Beat. Or gayer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stronger and gayer is what we could all hope for. <laughs> it's made me more emotional, for sure. <laughs> that tight little bod I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's definitely. Um, I'm very grateful for all of it. Seriously, like it really. It it, see, it feels dumb because like there's so many points where I've been just like, man, I would, I would, I would, if I could kill someone right now, uh, and eliminate this, I would. Like for sure, there's just nothing no, I don't want to do to get over. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. trade off like, I, was worth I just, it. Yeah, yeah, I just can't enjoy myself. I remember one time, dude, uh, when it was really bad right off the bat. I went to my friend's house and I was just like dissociating, disassociating, dissociating, yep. um, the whole time. We were all eating pizza and everyone was so normal, and I was like, these people are so normal. This is weird, <laughs> and I'm literally sitting here like a like a little thought inside my body, and I just feel like I can barely move. And I feel like I'm not here right now, and I'm like eating this pizza, just pretending. And it's just, it's a symptom of anxiety. Like it's, a, it's people it's like, like third person view type of shit. Depersonalization, like I believe at is yourself. what it's called. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Depersonalization. I have heard of that one. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's like, that's probably honestly the worst part of all of it because it doesn't feel like you're a real human. So it's really difficult to enjoy things, uh, yeah. or, or, uh, yeah, it's really, it's really, it's really difficult to enjoy things. It's very easy to be harder on yourself. So like, I think that that's, that's probably the, the thing that all this has made me learn is just to be like empathetic and compassionate towards myself and, and others, which I'm very grateful because I, I, um, yeah, I did not have a lot of that when I was a child. For sure. well, I, I think, I asshole. think that's a good lesson to learn. And I think sometimes life can humble you in that way where 
you might not be able to relate or, or it makes you view life a different way. When you go through something that viscerally challenging and you're in a place where you're like, man, I, you know, I don't know if I'm ever going to get out of this. And you eventually mm -hmm. get to a point where you part, part of that, that part of your life in a sense is in the rearview mirror. Of course, you still deal with it every day, I'm sure. But to that extent, it it probably humbles you to the point where now you're looking around and you're seeing people like, hey, maybe they're going through something like this that I don't For know sure. that they're going through. Yeah. Um, and it's Yeah. It's like a whole bunch of stuff. It's a, it's a big, big just bunch of shit. You got to have faith in yourself. You got to know what to do. You got to have yeah. the right knowledge. You got to have the right support group. You got to have the right approach. You got to understand, like, what is the meaning of why I'm doing this? There's just so many yep. things. You, and that's I think this whole thing is why I hate people like Jack Doherty. <laughs> online <laughs> and why it's so easy uh, why i want to make content about like or he, why hey, he's the guy that i wish you would kill to get rid of your problems exactly. like if you could trade his life to get rid of your anxiety exactly. i would trade that in a heartbeat absolutely and there's yeah. i can name like i have a whole list just kidding of i don't people you would have killed i, I don't have anxiety. a list but you have I a kill list one. go on i could make one i could nancy <laughs> pelosi's on, on there <laughs> Yeah. You're like Steve Buscemi from Adam Sandler at the exactly, end. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah, he's the worst. Sorry, I, I had to cut you off because he makes me want to die. No, just talking yeah, about it, him. I, I really think that I, because I don't like this, I don't like, I don't like the slop content, but I love just being able to make money off of talking shit about those people. That's awesome. Yeah, well, that I mean, hey, you're preaching to the choir here. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's fucking great. Yeah. I, it's, it's so cool. It feels it feels healthy. It feels good. Yeah. Whenever yeah. I can make a video about those pieces of shit. And I think that's also why I distrust the government so much because I think they're evil people. I think they're evil. Yeah, I, in general, I'm kind of a, a, a big government skeptic, big time. Yeah, yeah big time. Huge. Big time corporation skeptic. A hundred percent. Yeah, the we'd have to. We'd, the, we'll, I'll have to have you one. back in the future, and we'll go down the government, the government, uh, you know, Monsanto big corp rabbit hole because that shit is deep, and I and I've I've kind of been, I've been pilled the last several years in that in oh, that dude. particular area, just in general, yeah. just from my time online, but just things you see. But you realize at the end of the day that all of these institutions that are supposed to uh, have your best interest in mind. Uh, don't give a singular shit about you or your well-being. Well, all. humans are a commodity. Correct, hundred yeah. percent. Any any and entity that exists to commodify human beings is an entity that should be destroyed. Yes, and humans they're a commodity, and most of the institutions that are supposed to be in charge of our well-being are just bought and paid for. I mean, money Absolutely. and power rule the world. Yeah, you know I mean, like the government is run. By lobbyists, essentially. Drain the swamp. <laughs> yeah, Drain the right. swamp. Yeah, exactly. But it's true. It's fucking true. And it's crazy. I have a question for you. I'm curious. Uh, it's actually, would you rather? I was going to ask it earlier, but we we got talking about supplements, and I was getting horny talking about you working out. <laughs> so, is the uh, would you rather spend an entire night in an elevator with the vegan teacher singing you vegan songs on the ukulele? <laughs> mm -hmm. Or give an aggressive raspberry to the moist crease that separates Nikocado's underbelly and upper pubic area. Um, vegan teacher. Okay. A night in an elevator with her singing songs. I pretty much did. She can't, She hung out for a couple days at my house. I pretty much did oh, that already. A few days? Well, yeah. I know you did, but I didn't know, like, I thought it was like, hey, she came over, did the interview. I didn't know she was there for a few days. She was chilling, bro. She She's was cool. Chilling. She's all right. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I tried really hard to be a good person. I thought I was being a good person by, uh, you know, and not, not your, like... Was she freeloading? <laughs> dude, no. It, uh, to, be, to be clear, too, I, I didn't think I was being a good person by, like, virtually, or, uh, like, virtuously being a good person. Right. Like, oh, people right. are going to think I'm awesome by doing this. It was for no, me. You, just, you wanted to give her a chance. We'd talk shit Absolutely. about her. It's like, hey, come explain your side Absolutely. of the story. Yeah, which yeah. I love. I feel like it was my duty, but now I realize, no, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, and she's just kind of as a little as batshed as you would think she is. Oh, I it, I kill more animals because of her now, specifically. <laughs> like I'm not even shitting you. That's I really so do. Fucking perfect. I, I feel like I I started off as like a pretty rational, level-headed, middle of the road type person. Mm -hmm. Now I think of her, and I just want like I live on a lot of land now, and I can just at pretty much any point of the day just look out back, grab one of these 
65 guns on the floor right here. <laughs> just and then mow just down shoot a an colony animal. of animals. <laughs> yeah. And this I do one's that. for the vegan teacher. Exactly. I love that shit. You know what's funny you say that? Because I, anytime like I do a video or I see these fucking protesters like throwing peanut butter on the Mona Lisa or stopping traffic at an intersection to protest big oil, like just mm-hmm. stop oil is one of the ones. Like I am convinced that, it, that they have to be a psyop from big oil because there's, they are yeah. making. They make, like, every time I see one of them at a protest, I want to walk outside and just dump gasoline and oil all over my yard and just light it on fire. I want to go to a gas station, put my credit card in the pump, and just drain the fucking pump to the ground and it's waste like all of the gas. They piss me so they piss me off so fucking yeah. bad that it made, like, I, I could maybe understand your point of view and we could have a discussion, but when I see you blocking traffic and, like, sitting there with your... I, I now out of spite for you have taken the other side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, um, I feel the same way. I think, and also naturally I feel that way. I think, I think I, uh, my brain is kind of wired to indiscriminately dislike things that don't make sense to me. Uh, Sure. Just off the bat. Like if something doesn't make sense, I'm like, okay, that's just stupid. Like, what are you fucking doing? Yeah. Um, but now I have a thoughtful, I'm, I, I take a more thoughtful perspective to these Do people. You? but and what, and what does that look like? It's the same result. I just It's more mental <laughs> masturbation to get to the same result. It takes me longer to get there, but I get to exactly, the same place Exactly, yeah. It's just end. slower. It's like my own roadblock. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're just edging for a minute before you yeah. blow your load and want to fucking kill that this That is person. exactly correct. Yeah. I like that. I, I, but I seriously do try to understand. I try to put myself like... I do too. Okay, the Mona Lisa. Throw Campbell's chicken noodle soup at the Mona Lisa. What good does that do me? None. None. No good. Makes you look like a fucking idiot. The argument is, okay, now you've gone viral and people are going to look into it. And you're, it's always about raising awareness, right? Spreading where I have actually have a t-shirt that I never actually released, but it says I stay spreading awareness because the whole fucking idea of like, I'm spreading awareness. I'm like, okay, you, uh, so you went viral by defaming a beautiful historical work of art. Yeah. And you're wearing a t-shirt that says like climate change or just stop oil. Like, so you're raising awareness for climate change. So the lay person is supposed to see that and then be like, Oh shit, maybe I should buy a Tesla or, Oh shit. Maybe I should, yeah. maybe I should change to electric instead of gas heater, like, or, or sell my gas stove and buy an electric stove. It's like, no motherfucker. Like you're not, you're raising awareness for how fucking insufferable you are. That's the only thing yeah, you're doing. And, and anybody it, that's on yeah. the fence and maybe interested in like having a de- like an actual discussion about what can we do to maybe make some changes. Maybe I could do these things in my life to, uh, you know, have a positive impact on the earth, you've now lost that person because they see you and you look like a complete fucking entitled rat. And mm-hmm. now, and that this is my experience at least. So like, I have yeah. such a disdain for the people that do these things uh, be- because they're inconvenienced. They're destroying beautiful things. They're inconveniencing people. You're shutting down highways, people that need to go to work, ambulances, like it, it to spread also, your message. It, it doesn't make here. sense. Like naturally, it's an unnatural, like, expecting that spreading awareness in that way, like being a provocateur or doing anything that's provocative, <clears throat> expecting that, expecting that being a, expecting that being a provocateur can have any sort of effect other than just a positive entertainment outcome, expecting right. that being a provocateur can have any effect meaningful about changing people's minds about anything is so against nature. I mean, there's studies about cognitive bias. People don't just believe shit that they're told, right? Like they have to be, that's why, that's why democracy is so popular. And that's why our current, like, that's why we have the leaders we have is because they're, they tell us stuff we want to hear and then we vote for them. Yes. It's not, it's not that them, them being like, look, this needs to change and we're going to do this. Those are always extremely small groups that fizzle out always. Like historically, nothing like that has ever had any sort of meaningful impact uh, being a provocateur does not work unless you're trying to make money and be- get rich and entertain people that will work. But if you're trying to raise awareness, you are just literally jacking off into the wind and feeling good about yourself. I just, I just think more so these days it's performative. I think there were obviously That's movements. Is, yeah. There were movements that, you know, obviously 
were impactful. Nah. To... <laughs> you know, I'm just you know, kidding. Fuck that. <laughs> but it feels like more and more in the in the digital age, the social media age, so much of it feels performative and wanting to belong mm -hmm. as opposed to genuinely thinking. Well, the, the, the sad part to me is I do think a lot of people genuinely feel like they're having an impact. Like it's almost like a self masturbation, like, Oh, I'm doing the good thing and mm -hmm. it feels good. And I'm recording it. So I'm like, you know, I'm spilling and milk on the market basket floor and like, you know, save the cows. I got the shit, but, but are you example, doing it because you care or are you doing it because you're getting likes and comments and that feels good? You know, a good example too, just speaking to human psychology and like mm -hmm. historically, um, uh, we can all agree. You said good movements. A lot of the anti-racist movements of the, early 20th century were all good we can like agree MLK on that now and, yeah 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 like all that is awesome like all that stuff is completely rational it's logical and there are still a lot of racist people there are still a lot of people who that message that was based in you know perfect rationality like it doesn't fucking make sense to be racist there are still racist people of course. Like, and there's probably a lot to be honest uh yes. like probably hopefully minority i would like to believe a minority um but uh you are not going to change things uh, by by being completely irrational uh, because people can't even change things by being rational and getting rid of things like fucking racism or, uh, I don't know, fucking look how much control we just talked about corporations and stuff. Like, why why do why do we allow that? Why is that a thing? Why do, I, we, I, uh, why do we allow BlackRock to buy all the houses so no one can own houses? <laughs> owns the entire why housing market. Why are we market? allowing that? Oh, because you know? they have all the, the money. They can do whatever they, they have all the money. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, really it's I, frustrating. It is frustrating. Let's I take you up know arms, Leon. There is <laughs> I listen, I'm building my I'm building my small arsenal, but I live in Massachusetts, <laughs> so I'm cocked with what I'm allowed to own here. I want it like my goal is to buy I mean I'm like 35 minutes away from New Hampshire which is where my folks live and I've lived there for a lot of time my goal is to just buy like a bunch of land and have like a farm up there where I can just stockpile guns have a That's little range cool. kind of do like the demo ranch thing up there Absolutely cuz it's live free or die in New Hampshire and then you go Fuck down yeah. you know 20 minutes south to Massachusetts and it's it's a liberal tax Massachusetts haven which is fine. I, you know, I grew up in the North Shore here, and I love it. But yeah, politically, it's it is what it is. But um, I wanted to ask you. I won't keep you too much longer because God, but oh, God damn, I'm having a good time. I love chatting Me with too. you. Me too. Let's, yeah. let's run it as long as you want to. I don't care. <laughs> How are those cheese fries, by the way, dude? They're fucking good. Where'd you get them from? Or uh, I don't want to dock. Not to dox yourself if it's like a mom and pop near you, but <laughs> Shooters Bar and Grill in Stephenville, Texas, seven six four zero one. And this is my address. <laughs> it's pretty good. I, it's a little I bar wanted grill. to ask you actually. This wasn't on, on my things to ask you, but you know, you've grown a pretty considerable audience in the last several years. I think even since I got to know you, you were like around two million subs, and you, you know, you've had quite the quite the story arc from starting on YouTube as kind of a gamer uploading gaming videos mostly. And then game in the commentary. And now you, the stuff you put like, you've just, you've kind of, you know, you started going, I, and, and I remember talking about this kind of going the, the moist critical route where you're just talking about things, but you're doing it at such a high level with such a good team where you're taking these things. The editing is on point. The, the, the stories are on point and it's just, uh, how, what was that? What was that process like to go from like uploading uploading shit gaming videos to now pumping out long form, highly produced, well researched content on a regular basis? Was it was it just like the natural inclination to continue trying to take the next step? Like, hey, I'm doing this; it's going well. How can I do this better? Was that was that what it felt like for you? I would say for the amount of time that I've actually for for the amount of time that I've been focusing on the candy company. Yeah. The YouTube stuff has just been pure inspiration and just like wanting to improve stuff, wanting to hire more people, wanting to pay the people that I have more so they can yeah. enjoy themselves more. And like, you know, just everyone on my team literally is my friend that I could have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with for hours, like genuinely. That's great. Um, and they're all good people. There's a couple of them that I don't know as well as I would like to, but we're, sure. you know, we're getting like satchel. Pfft. Um, it's reality, though. That's how it <laughs> little, is. Yeah. little shout out. Just kidding. I love Satchel. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, 
yeah, it, I would say the last like two years since the candy has come into fruition, I've had much larger goals. So it's gotten me to think outside of the box in terms of the YouTube thing. So I right. can do things out of inspiration, like actually make decisions like, oh, I, I want to better this or, you know, let's have a meeting once a day. So we're getting on, everyone's getting on the same page yeah. um, instead of just kind of, you know, delegating and then just watching money come in and doing the minimal amount of work and trying to have as much free time as possible. Before that, it was literally just, I don't know what I'm doing and I don't want to do anything else and I know that I can do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to figure it out a little bit. And I think that was more the the desperado kind of like trying to figure it out, failing a lot, succeed. I actually, I, I'm going to, I'm going to give Andrew Tate some credit. The okay. video that I made where I, I interviewed Andrew Tate was the beginning of my um, actually trying to run a business in terms of YouTube. That next story, Stark. That yeah. next story arc, excuse me. I, I forget sometimes that you interviewed Andrew Tate. That's mm -hmm. so, We're good that's buddies, so me and him. Yeah, you guys text once in a while? <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is this? It's no, I know, like this. It's a thing, It's but that's like a thing that him and his brother yeah. do, and it's like the sign of an alpha male, right? Ah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if what it sitting, is. Like, I feel like this whole interview, I, I should have been sitting here like this, and maybe yeah, people exactly. would have taken me seriously. Yeah, maybe I would have yeah. had more respect for you, Leon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I've been <laughs> talking about how fucking tight your body is, just holding my hands <laughs> like this. Yeah. Shoot, this your thing body, stinks. Your body's yeah, so tight. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so fucked up. Um, no, I love yeah. that, though, because I think on YouTube, like, it's easy. It's very easy. And I know this from personal experience to you figure out something, you try things, something works. It works well. You double down and you get to a point where you're kind of like, okay, I have two options. I can continue to do this thing that works well and put people in places that make it easier for me and have a lot more free time and work less and keep doing this and kind of coast and live an, or you can take the resources that you're getting from maybe this thing that's working and reinvest those into scaling it or trying new things and continuing to build that. And I personally went through a phase maybe two years ago, maybe like 21, 22. I had a pretty good, I had a pretty good pandemic, not to brag. <laughs> it was pretty great. Too, and I only bro. say that because like views were like, Yeet! Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because everyone's sitting at home on their phone crying about the fucking real job everyone's, they had that wasn't so real anymore. Everyone's sitting at home anymore. dying and shit. Yeah, I know. So, so I got into a place where, and, and I think, you know, life is a lot about timing too. And for me, I got into a place where I was, I was just in coast mode. I wasn't innovating. I wasn't creating. I was doing what worked. But it did free up time for me at this time to be with my son. Like he was, he was two years old in 2020, and I've, I felt really good about the past several years because I was very present. I spent cool. a lot of time with him, my wife, good. and that balance for me was amazing. And I almost felt guilty because I was like, I, the amount of like the ROI I was getting from what I was doing on the internet felt more than I deserved. You know what I mean? Like. I don't know how to explain that really well, but I felt like I, I wasn't, you know, wasn't working as hard as I was. Cause when you start, like you have to fucking grind, like there's yeah, no way sure. around it. You're and doing you 50 grind. jobs. Yeah. And, and then you, you get to a place and some things work and you can maybe take your foot off the gas a little bit for a little while. And, and I went through that phase where I was doing that and I think it was good, but I've, he's in kindergarten going into first grade now and he's older and I'm back in that, I'm back in that mode where like, man, I need, I need a challenge. Like I want to do something that's exciting, exhilarating, that might fail. That's difficult. I mean, part of the reason why I'm doing this right here and with you and doing the show is because I fucking love long form content. I find as someone, as someone that's a 38 year old man that spent a lot of years on YouTube, most of the content I consume now is more profound thought provoking content in a situation like this, where people are having conversations. And so I'm like, well, why am I not putting myself in that situation, creating content like that. So, yeah. uh, I don't know what that next step is for me, but like, I, I, you know, I have a lot of, a lot of admiration and reverence for what you've been able to do at the, at the ripe age of 27, uh, to, to be running the candy company and stuff. I think that that's the one thing I've always had in my mind where it's like, I, I want to do something that is a legitimate business in the sense that I'm, I have a product or I have something yeah. that people enjoy that's physical 
that they like that I can be a part of because most of my career online has all been just digital content that is sure. monetized through advertisements. Right. Yep. And that's what I, I'm very envious of that. And I, I don't know what that looks like for me, but um, I think that's, I think that's great. And I'm, I, I wanted to actually kind of transition last one of the, one of the last questions I had is I, I don't know if many people know this, but you have a gaming studio. Is that okay to talk about? Should I not talk about this? Yeah, or? let's. Uh, we, we can. Oops. We can leave what can that. I, in. What can I talk about? Uh, you you can you can say whatever you want, uh, but I will <laughs> respond very particularly. Do you want? So you, you're involved in a gaming studio, something like that, in some capacity. But this is like on the hush. Like, have have you talked about this at all in your YouTube videos? Not anything. This is no? the the the. However many if, an hour and. 20 minutes or whatever, however far we are into the podcast of this podcast right here is the first time anybody's ever heard anything about me being involved in anything reg regarding gaming. I can cut it if you need me to. No, no, no. You can leave it in. Oh, it's fine. That. It's going to come Fuck out eventually. It. Let's go, dude. All I'll right. leave nuggets. And I will. I want to I wanna expose myself. This, The inspiration for me asking that came from a personal conversation we had. Right. And I, but at the time I was talking to you, it didn't feel like it was something that needed to be hush hush. So that's why right. the only reason. No, I no, you're ask. fine. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's not, it will be public. It will be public. Um, so it's kind of like first inning type of thing right now. Pretty much. It's, yeah. it's, we have, we have a lot of, we, we have a lot of progress and like that progress, baby. <laughs> I will say, I will also say this, that if, 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 if I can, do it right, then I might only be a YouTuber for like the next eight months. Ooh, is that, come on, come on, bro. And that doesn't just mean gaming studio. That doesn't, uh, that, or you know, game, whatever the fuck it is. I don't know what it is. It might not even be a gaming studio. It doesn't mean Sour Boys. It's like the whole, what I'm trying to make in general, overarching okay. my okay. whole plan. So you have a not, vision. My whole vision, it, yeah, it will. I will hopefully will not just be a. I will not be a YouTuber in eight months. I'll still make YouTube videos for sure, but it will not be something where I'm like, oh, I need to make a YouTube video today. Right. Oh. So it will be. <laughs> I. I it, it's kind of like. It will be kind of like the PewDiePie, where like you're now you have that thing, or I mean, he retired off of YouTube, but it's there will be no the monetary incentive as good as it could be will not be strong enough to feel like you have to make a video when you don't want to because the other things Absolutely. are operating at full cylinder. Yeah, yeah. And it, and I'm truly, when I say this, I mean it. I'm not one to really operate off of monetary incentive. I think sure. the reason that I've done what mostly Cle what I've clearly. done is just because I hire people that I love and I want them to make money because it I makes like them that. happy. And I want that's to do fantastic. stuff with them. That's like, that that's, empathy we that's that empathy we talked about. Yeah, exactly. About that's the number yeah. one thing. And money is, that is really, literally just batteries. I, I was I, I I was curious to ask you the driving force for a lot of what you do. That that you think that is one of the things that brings you the most fulfillment is being able to provide jobs for people in your life that you care about and that feels good. Yeah, yeah. That and also unbridled sexual frustration. <laughs> No, seriously, it actually does. It really does. Like, I, I work, I live with two of my best. You've met them. You've met Clint and Michael both, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're two Hot of my best friends. yeah. Dude, no. the <laughs> best friends in the world. Um, Like, seriously, it's so cool that I get to work with them and pay them enough money to where this can be their career. Yeah, That's yeah, fucking yeah. awesome. That's yeah. so badass. That's what makes me really excited. Because I'll be fine always. I mean, like, I am so lucky. If I, if I literally just don't, change anything i can just not like i have nothing to be i have nothing to take for granted essentially is what i'm trying to say yeah yeah and you i mean you're the type of guy just at 27 i've always said this about myself and i see this in people like if if something happened in the youtube channel fucking got deleted tomorrow you'd figure it out you're like oh, yeah. you are uh, you are cut from the cloth that is entrepreneurial you mm -hmm. know how to start things figure things out <clears throat> create businesses so that you, your job kind of becomes, like you said earlier, putting out fires like you're. Yeah. You, so you make videos, but you're also you're just adept at having to to transition, adapt when things go a little haywire. And yeah. So if something were to fucking go crazy, 
you're going to be fine. And obviously you have some other businesses, you get a little cushion there, but yeah, that's, I was curious about your North star. Now you mentioned the vision, like, and I'm not going to dig in that because it sounded like it was, it had to do with the, you know, it sounds mm -hmm. like you have something with the sour boys and the game, all these things, mm -hmm. the wheels are turning, but what do you, like, what do you see yourself? Like Caleb, the age of Leon Lush, 10 years from now, decade, you're rounding the core on 40. Most of your beard is gray and that's why you shave the sides tight now. Like I do. Okay. <laughs> what are we this? looking at? Like what? Are you what? like CEO, 500 employees, uh, 10 companies? What are you thinking? Do you have a 10 year vision or are you looking like three, six, 12 months down the road? I think I have, a, I do not have a 10 year vision. I have a probably, I think generally my vision is about a year. Okay. That's usually that's, what I can, yeah, usually what fair. I can surmise, uh, yeah. or, you know, until like some, like some kind of event or like, a. I can see until the end of this specific thing that I have some form of control over. I can't imagine really what I would be. Hopefully children. I would like to have children. Okay. Um, I think yeah. having children would be pretty cool. It is. Uh, like 10, 15, somewhere in there. Hey, I mean, yeah, let's go. Conservative it up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I will name them. I will name, <clears throat> I will name one Ralph, one yeah. Soren, one Andrew. Yo. All my if, idols. If your girl goes more than four months without being pregnant, is she really a God-fearing woman? I don't exactly, think so. Exactly, yeah. Does she actually <laughs> have respect not. for the man of the house? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, no. I just tease. kidding. We, just we kidding. literally, my, my wife and I had one kid, and she's like, I'm done. I'm like, I'm yeah, <laughs> okay. that's fair. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. Well, listen, it's been an absolute treat. I, I could talk to you for hours. I got a million things I could ask you, but I've taken up enough of your time. I really appreciate you being here on the... The, the decently indecent podcast. Uh, it feels weird saying that, but I'm excited to to be in this medium now. Uh, and listen, you were the pro. You've you've been doing a podcast for two years now, and uh, I'm just I I'm just I <laughs> I was looking at the channel earlier t earlier tonight. It was uh, I think it's been almost like 120. Something. I mean, it's it's two True, years, yeah. a little over two. Were you there from episode yeah, one? Yeah, I was there from yeah. inception. It's it's God so funny. Damn. I I love. I really like. Seriously, cannot. I love Mudahar and I He's love He's a great Nuts. guy. They're yeah. both, they're both, they've both been excellent people to me. And yeah. like, it's just like, I'll go in there and we'll just be talking about some shit that I just don't understand. And I'm yeah. like, you guys didn't tell me to study. Not right. And <laughs> like people literally, they are, they, in the comments, they're like, dude, is, is there a reason that that third guy is there? And I'm like, <laughs> honestly, I'm starting to wonder because dude, that's so funny because I get those comments on, on uh, my YouTube channel I do with my wife because we live in different worlds and there'll, there'll be videos where anything internet related, I'm just all over it. And she's like, what the fuck is going on? And people are like, why, so, why is she even in these videos? I'm like, that's what people love. They love yeah, the, the dynamic the yeah, of people that are super into something and this one guy that's like, what the fuck is going on? It brings a it brings a sweetness to it, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. A certain yeah. je ne sais quoi. A je ne sais quoi, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, uh, yeah, I appreciate you, man. Oompaville, you know who he is. Check him out on YouTube. Buy Sour Boys candy. It's delicious and not trying to skimp on the sugar, which is why it's delicious. Yeah, it's and the they, sugar, bro. It's yeah, it's sugar, just candy. and they do they do a good job with the sugar. I appreciate you, brother. I can't wait to talk to you again. Yeah, man. I appreciate you having me as a – who was the first guest? Uh, my wife. You are okay. the first real. You are the That's first fair. real guest. Yeah. That's fair. Okay, I'll allow it. Yeah, you're the actual say, I'm making first a hit piece. No. <laughs> she was in the same room with me. I wanted to do the first one like traditional same room podcast. Yeah. So I was able to get away with that with my wife, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to be doing a lot of remote, and then I need my boy Caleb here because we're um just, we're going uh, to uh, be heading up to vagina probably in April. Okay. Virginia, me and my girlfriend. My yes. beautiful girlfriend and yes. uh massachusetts is like eight hours away yes well we should do a physical episode me and chris i would i fuck i would i would love nothing more than that yeah we should do we should do that that'd be cool yeah you let me know 